Okay, you probably all knew this one was coming, but the final one I want to talk about is a web application security scanner known as Burp Suite. Burp Suite, made by Portsliger, is probably the industry standard for web application security testing. Granted, there are other great tools out there like Open um, a Wasp Zap, uh, but yeah, Burp Suite is probably what you'll encounter the most is probably what the majority of sort of web application security consultants test with just because the functionality inside it is so intuitive is so good and it's just so expandable now i've only got the uh, community version installed on my machine so unfortunately i can't show you things like active scan i do use the pro version daily uh, for work but at home in my own lab i've only got the um, community version installed which unfortunately is very restricted in the things that it can do you know your brute force attacks with intruder are limited like on res like uh, a limited at request time so you can only send a certain amount of requests in a short period of time and you don't have things like automatic spidering and crawling uh, where you sort of go through the web application and build a sitemap. Um, in the pro version you've got a tool where you can just like crawl it or scan it or crawl and audit it and it will go through and it will populate uh, this whole sort of uh, sitemap for you. It's called Discovery, yeah, so there's an engagement tool called Discovery and as you can see engagement tools are blocked out on this version um, but yeah you've also got things like analyzing the target simulate manual testing um, I won't tell you about that but it's a good trick um, but there's also things like active scanning which if you find like a specific parameter or a specific functionality that isn't too sensitive and you can get away with being a bit reckless with it you can active scan that part of the web application to try and find vulnerabilities but yeah, Burp Suite, it's essentially a web application proxy. So it does come with its own browser um, installed. And it's a version of Chromium. And what you do is you load your target up into this website. And instead of it going sort of directly into the browser to the application, all the traffic is relayed through the application into Burp. And you can see here that here's all the HTTP history. You can see the like the requests and responses it makes and I'll tell you what if you just wanted to learn a bit more about web applications how they're built what the different functionalities of them are web application proxies are actually a fantastic way to learn about the different things that build up a website for instance you've got things like headers you've got your cookies and you can actually see the sort of back end the matrix code if you will of web applications you can see what happens when you send a request to google.com it will specify the host it will tell you what your user agent is it will say the actual path to the file it will tell you if you've come from a different website via the referrer and again this one you know you can see here in the responses there that they don't have any security headers in place they haven't got their xss protection or their x frame options or cache control or things like that you can learn a lot just by looking at the requests and responses to and from the application so yeah it's good just for learning about web application technologies but also when you get into the nitty-gritty of it it is great for finding vulnerabilities so if you get a request what you can do is you can send it to like intruder and then you can specify different parameters so if I wanted to brute force a cookie as a really bad example um, but you see there you can clear the parameters off that you can add the parameters back on and then you go into your payloads and then you can from a list or from something else again paid only pro version only you can specify a bunch of different things if you're brute forcing a password you could specify a password list and yeah it would treat this like a variable so on every request per item in the word list it would substitute whatever is in the sort of weird quotation marks uh, with the value in the word list and it will brute force it and then you also have repeater and what repeater is good for is if you're working on a particular vulnerability say you're looking at an SQL injection um, but you you're still working out how it works so if you're doing like a union based SQL injection and you're trying to get the syntax right and you're structuring the commands so that you're selecting null null and you're trying to work out how many columns there are or something or you're trying to concatenate it into one query then you can keep sending the request with the repeater 
until you get it right. So you just be sending a request and in the response it will come back and it will be like 500 error and then you can work out why is it 500 error, why is it doing this, why is it doing that. Um, I've actually turned the box off but you can see there what would happen is it would send a get request to that and the response of the application will come back here but it's just good for sort of on the fly editing. Um, sequencer, uh, this is good for sort of like predicting tokens and things like that. Um, it can sort of, I think it's for detecting like the entropy in unique tokens. So if you've got things like CSRF tokens and things like that, you can start a capture on it where you highlight the sort of CSRF token or the unique token or the session token, and it will do requests over and over and over and over and over again, checking the sequence to see if it can predict the next one, and then it will develop like an entropy chart and tell you sort of how complex it is and whether it could be predictable uh, very good you know because you don't want tokens to be predictable especially if they're like session tokens or you know if they generate user IDs um, randomly um, and send them to the database or something like that you don't want that information to be predictable um, but then you've got decoder as well so if you capture cookies that are encoded in like base 64 or md5s you can decode them in here or if you find some information that's being submitted in an encoded way then you can come in here and try and smart decode it it's a bit like cyber chef if you've ever used that you can sort of smart decode different values and it will try and identify what has been encoded with and actually bring back the sort of raw text form of it um, compare it. this is good if you've got two requests so if you're trying to do username enumeration for instance um, and you're sending requests to the server what you can do is you can compare the response lengths and if you notice that two responses from the server are different slightly by a few bytes in the response length what you can do is you can bring them to Compara and it will highlight exactly where the difference is in the program. Another great feature, uh, again, which could help with username enumeration. Um, Logger just logs things. Extender, okay, so this is one of the really most powerful things about Burp as well. If you go into the BAP store, you can see there are a lot of plugins that you can add to improve the functionality of it. We've now got like log for shell scanner, log for shell everywhere, which will automatically append like specific log for shell payloads to um, your headers and things like that. So when you send a request, it will try to execute a log for shell payload and then it will sort of uh, work with a feature of Burp called Collaborator. You get a Collaborator server and it will do like a DNS request back to that Collaborator server to see whether like the code execution was successful. But yeah, there's loads of things in here that can like improve functionality, improve logging and make things like prettier. You've got uh, like SQLI Pi, which integrates with SQL map um, to go for a more would take for ages. But it just goes to show like the actual power of Burp Suite, all these different additions that you can add to it to make it better. Um, and then you've got like your project options. I was just talking about the sort of collaboration server earlier. Um, you can specify your own collaboration server, which again would be recommended for clients because if you're sending sort of collaboration requests to Burp server, then again that's potentially that's, that's client information that could be being potentially sent back there. Uh, but you can configure things like client certificates in here. So if you've got a if you're testing a web application that needs client certificates, you can configure the client certificates in here. Um, one other thing as well, which just crossed my mind, is if you're testing APIs, like web applications without the front end, you sort of interact directly with the API endpoints, you can launch like REST APIs in Postman and bring those <laughs> and then proxy Postman into Burp, so everything's recorded in Burp anyway. Um, again, so so powerful and you can do things uh, as well like I think you can actually tell Hydra to go through burp as well so if you're doing brute force in you can actually specify a proxy in Hydra to go through there um, but yeah like with most things you can specify a proxy but yeah this is gonna be like your primary tool for doing web application security scans it isn't the only tool again I mentioned oh what's that which is very similar and it's laid out differently and quite frankly I struggle when I have to use oh what's that because I just don't use it that much but uh, burp suite is an excellent tool and if you haven't done already go and check out port swiggers web academy uh, web security academy 
labs. Um, they've got labs for every type of web application vulnerability and they allow you to drill it over and over again so you can sort of get familiar with the process, how to identify it, how to exploit it and learn more about it and it's definitely worth going through the labs and they do offer a certification for it as well which I believe is like 60, B, uh, 60 quid at the moment so that's worth it if you if you can get that you sort of proven your worth in the industry right there because it's not an easy qualification to get um but yeah that's burp suite that is your probably most common web application security scanner